Hi, welcome to Paywin's Note. Today we have the world famous architect Paul Naritaka Tanke with us. Hello, Paul. Welcome back to Taiwan again. Hello, thank you. Right. Thank you for having me. It's uh, a great, great pleasure to be here. Your father, Kenzo Tanke, mm. is also a very, very famous architect. And what is it like to have him as a father growing up? Well, yeah. My father was just a plain father to me <laughs> <laughs> until I joined the firm but then he became my mentor but until then you know he was a uh, very simple uh, good father and uh, we didn't talk too much about architecture until I decided to uh, tell him that I wanted to become an architect until then you know he was we were watching the movie together, you know, uh, traveling together, uh, that's about it, you know, good old father to me. And what did you learn about architectures from your father? Uh, he didn't teach me too much, but I watched him uh, following his, uh, you know, trips, well, especially our family trips are always going to the site. So this was uh, uh, unusual because the family trip in normal circumstances, people go to vacation, uh, mountain, seaside or something. Tange's family trip is a construction site <laughs> and a business meeting. So uh, by watching him, I learned a lot. He never forced me to become an architect. And at the <coughs> Harvard Architecture School, and are there any professor who kind of influenced you, you know, back then? Well, actually, there are a few uh, professors uh, when I was there and be even before. Uh, when I went to Harvard, my father uh, introduced me to a few of the uh, people that my father knew. One was uh, Toshi Katayama. He was a graphic designer and he, mm -hmm. was, he was a professor at uh, Visual Environmental Study and undergraduate at Harvard. So him being Japanese and uh, being close friend of my father, he became like my uh, father in Boston. So I spent a lot of time with him and uh, learn a lot from him. Second one was Jose Luis Sert, who was uh, before, before I got there, he was a dean of uh, Harvard Graduate School of Design. <coughs> and uh, he was senior to my father. So every time my father came, we would have uh, lunch or dinner together. And he's the one who said, and I believe in deep down in my mind, important things. Architecture is art with social responsibility. And I really believe that because if you're an artist, if you're sad, you can paint, sad painting, and so on. But uh, architecture, you cannot do that. You have, you, you're spending money of somebody and the building cannot be sad or depressing or something, right? So, uh, you know, art with social responsibility, when he taught me that, uh, it hit me hard and say, well, it is, we have the responsibility to the society. So, which was uh, another eye-opening uh, experience, meeting and spending time with him. And uh, when I was a, st a student at GSD, there are a few professors, but one of the professor, uh, Jorge Silvetti, who was my thesis advisor, also a very uh, influence, influential person, and he taught me 
every line has to have a meaning. We have a tendency, I mean, people have a tendency that, you know, architects just draw. Yes, we draw, but we have a responsibility for society, and so each line has to have a meaning. It's like, it's not a decorative element, or I feel like line, uh, drawing that line. Each line has to have the reason to be there. So there are a few uh, professors uh, taught me uh, how to uh, look at architecture. And not one mentor, but many of the, I'm very fortunate to have so many professors who taught me a lot at Harvard. And over the years, you also have won many international awards. And for example, uh, 2008, you won the uh, award for the Kakun Tower. This yes. is a very special building. And <coughs> can you tell me about this? Yes. Well, uh, this is a 50 story school, vocational school building. Oh. Um, of course, as land is getting scarce globally, so all the schools are going vertical. And uh, we were given this opportunity to design the uh, building. It was a competition. 360 plus plus entry uh, were participating in this competition. And uh, we are the five finalists. And then we had a uh, interview and whatnot. And uh, we, we could get it. The uh, whole idea for me, because it comes from my background. My father was an educator. He was a professor at the Tokyo University for more, almost 30 years. And uh, he taught at Harvard, and he, before that he taught at MIT. And so he was always architect, at the same time educator. And we have done many uh, universities and uh, kindergartens, the schools, and so on. And we learned from him that what's important in school architecture is not only the classroom. Corridor is very important. Uh, schoolyard is very important. Why? Because that's where people gather and they exchange idea. Classroom is only one way usually. Teacher teaches students. Where corridor and schoolyard is somewhere that people exchange ideas more casually. Student to student, professor to student, and so on. So in his mind, it was very important space. So we always had that in mind. But then, if you go 50 stories, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this communication space? So what we did was we truncated schoolyard and every three floor we created atrium in three different locations and they stuck us up because usually school is about three to four story high. Yes. Uh -huh. Right? So stacking everything up makes sense and of course 50 stories it's difficult to have the elevator stopping every floor to bring all the students at the same time because it's very clear peak hours that are concentrated in uh, beginning and end of the day. So for, for us, every three floors elevator stop instead of every floor. Mm. So it's 50 stories but divided by three. So you can transport people easier. And then every time you get to the floor, there's a three-story atrium space, which I consider a uh, truncated uh, schoolyard. That's very smart. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's like uh, there are many examples of school, vertical school, but it was the first time that we, they did this kind of school. It's in a way redefining the uh, school fa facilities, in a way, and it was uh, quite well received. We had uh, Crown Prince of Luxembourg visiting us, uh, Prime Minister of Singapore visiting us, 
uh, many uh, of the educator from uh, all over the world visiting us as an example of new type of architecture. And then we are very proud that we could actually come up with one solution. It's not there are many solutions of architecture. So at least we could uh, pose uh, uh, one solution to new type of vertical school building. Uh, I'm wondering, do you have a design philosophy? <laughs> well, I'm not... Uh, well, my design philosophy is to create a comfortable space, mm -hmm. feeling good space. Because we are uh, building for people, majority. I mean, we have done uh, uh, building for animals too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the majority of time, you know, we are creating a building space for people. So, for me, most important is for them to feel comfortable. But then, how do we define comfortable? Um, what is your advice for the young architect out there for today? Well, actually, it's a good question because when I turn 18 that I can drive the car. Uh, my father had an office in uh, Paris and uh, we lived uh, summer in Paris. So uh, he told me to go look at architecture. <laughs> So, uh, of course, I went from uh, Paris to Geneva to Italy and then down and then come up south of France and going up back to uh, Paris. So I made a 10-day trip. And uh, what, the, what it taught me is he was right. I mean, you have to feel the space. Um, sometimes you see the photograph of the space so so much but you go to that place and say wow it's so small or sometimes oh it's big the photograph cannot give you that sensation mm. and uh, so especially now everything is available you turn on the internet you can find anything but my advice to young architect or architectural student is just go and see the real thing and that's very uh, eye-opening experience wow thank you so much for your precious time and all this wonderful story and i do hope to see you in the near future yes thank, thank you, you. Mr. thank you mm -hmm. thank you very much for your time thank, thank you, you.